Hi everyone, I'd like to officially welcome you to today's Rebound to Skating webinar. This is the 10th webinar in our series, um, and it has been offered uh, through a grant uh, through the Ontario Trillium Foundation. Um, you can view all the past webinars on our Skate Ontario YouTube site. Today, we are joined by Mark Bradshaw. He is the dance director at Skate Oakville, um, and he specializes in all sorts of things, uh, but he's specialized, his big focus is uh, um, excuse me, skating skills and fundamentals. Um, and he's the dance director there at Skate Oakville. Um, as you know, we've been continuing to create resources um, that have real life examples for our program, our performance and development opportunities. Um, and Mark has been helping us work on the skill development session version of this. So he has created one that is uh, for edge and turn. Uh, development for skaters coming back to the ice after long periods of time and that type of thing. So we're going to look at his session today. So Mark, we're going to start off right off the hop. Um, why do you think this type of opportunity is important for your skaters? Um, yeah, I think it just, it gives skaters a self of awareness. Um, it all boils down to being able to know exactly what the boot and blade are doing on the ice. And so when they're able to now under, have a good understanding of where they are inside, outside, back of the blade, front part of the blade, where the heel is, where the toe pick is, um, then they gain their confidence and then they can kind of move forward. So that's why I started with this exercise with just even just holding onto the boards. And so they're gonna gain confidence, have an understanding, and then they're gonna move on from there. So that's just the, the big key thing is just awareness and that ranges all levels. That's awesome. So besides the benefits of skaters, um, allowing them to get the feel for their blades, using their transition back to the ice, are there any benefits for you as a coach to offer this type of session? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things. One, you, you, you definitely get an understanding of who wants it. Um, just because they are so basic of, a, of, of skills and exercises, some of them will just kind of fluff through it. And then you, you know exactly who really wants to do this. And then you also have, um, you can see this as um, it's skills to like just progress onto something else, right? And so then they have an idea of um, what they need to do. And also we as a coaches, we now get an idea of exactly who needs help. And then we can go from there. That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about timing. So skill development sessions as a whole, um, this type of a session uh, is something that we classify in our program in, I keep saying program, performance and development opportunity resources um, as something that we're focusing on that focuses on the fundamentals and getting the skills. Um, when we talk about that, obviously this is something we do all year round, um, but there's certain periods of time where you might focus new skills, that type of thing. Um, so we talked about running this at the beginning of the season um, or when your skaters come back from an injury or an extended period um, of time off. Are there other times of the year that you offer this and when it would, might, might it be beneficial? These, these things are ideal for just general um, learning and um, and this is like, if you use all of these exercises, then skaters really get a good idea of exactly where they're at and what they need to work on. But, um, I use these exercises all year round and I don't go through each one, but I'll pick and choose just to give them a little sense of where they're at, what they need to do. And then we can kind of move from there. So it's an all year thing. So, and do you, does that weekly, monthly, daily, like how, how often are you talking? Well, it varies on the skater, but. Um, yeah, weekly, and you just keep on figuring out who needs a little bit of help in a certain area, and then you just don't get dull, and, and it provides them with um, little different things that they can keep on working on, and you're changing things up, and that's what uh, keeps the skaters on their toes. No, that's no great. Kind of. That's great. Okay, so let's talk about levels then. So can you run this opportunity for any level of skater? Um, does your class change depending on the level, and how does it change? So um, with these exercises, as I've explained, you can use something else to challenge the higher, higher end skater. Um, and so, um, um, yeah, the, um, the, the skaters that I, I, I teach this to, it's, it's all levels. It goes right from, you know, the star one, two, all the way up to world and international skaters. Yeah. And how is it on the ice when you have big guys and little guys? Do you ever have everybody on the ice at the same time? Uh, not with this club, just because it is so big, right? Um, so we have more sessions that are designated for a certain level of skater. Um, but these can definitely be used for a variety of different levels. And so as you've, as I've explained, you can have 
you can challenge a certain group of skater if you're having it all at once and then they go through the same exercises and then once they're done because they're usually quicker at finishing it then you, they come back bang you can go okay while the other ones are still progressing going down the ice struggling then you can give, give them the, the higher end skaters something more which they need they demand it and then you can give them something that will will help them they demand it i love that <laughs> okay so let's talk about group size then so you talked about how your club is a big club um but is it some, is something you should run as a full class um or smaller groups or a mixture of the both um and do you have any pointers for running it maybe even a class size yeah i totally recommend if you have the opportunity any of the coaches to to run this as a full group size because then you can have full control of over the ice and then you're not disrupting the sessions but if they don't have that opportunity then yeah small groups and then you can kind of control where they're going and not disrupting the rest of what's happening on the ice right and programs and whatnot so um the um yeah it's just like it just goes back to just making sure that you you have a group of skaters that are like tightly linked and on the same skill level and then you can keep on challenging them either in a, a small group format or or large Okay, so if you're doing um, large class then, uh, as opposed to a smaller group format, do you run it in lanes? Do you run it as a perimeter? What type of, what does it look like on the ice? Yeah, I, I really like the, the just straight down the ice, wait for the, the group and then come back. So it gives the skater just a little bit of a rest. They can kind of think about what they just did and then come back again. So it's either like, depends on the size of the, the class. It's two at a time, three at a time, four at a time. And then they have their lane. They know exactly where they're going. They're not going to um, smash into anybody. And especially when you, you, I've run it sometimes where you go two at a time and then back around. And then they have a little bit of a chit, chit chat and skate back and then they start again. But um, so either either way is, is, is okay. As long as the skater has a full, a full ice surface to go straight down the ice and they can either go fast or slow and then kind of demonstrate their skill level. That's awesome. And so, okay, so then going back then to your small group. So big class is optimal, which I definitely get. I love being able to control the ice <laughs> yeah. you get to do what you need to do for sure. Um, so then going back to your smaller groups, this is sometimes um, the reality for some of our coaches that they need to teach it in smaller groups because they can't get the buy-in or they can't get the time frame to work in a big yeah. class environment. So any tips on how you can run that? Because uh, they, they do take up a lot of ice. Well, yeah, so the, the coordination exercises and uh, just the awareness of boots and blades at the very beginning there, that's easy to run in a small group setting. Obviously, when you're, you're getting up to like the, the speed and power, then you have to be observant over exactly what's going on with the rest of the, the session, right? So that um, that might need to just, with the speed and power, you can just use that for maybe the, the stroking sessions. There is the the ones where, what was it, the edge control and posture and, and that sort of thing. Um, that you can definitely use as um, smaller sense and smaller groups when you have the opportunity on the ice surface. Yeah, I like that. I love that. Um, okay, so talk to me about team coaching. Do you, have you ever done this in a team coach environment? And if so, how does it help or not help? Or what does it do for you? Yeah, I do that all the time. And so team coaching, when you have other skater, other coaches that are helping you with these exercises and, and or any other exercise, when you're doing that, then they you, they jump in and add to the uh, the dynamic of helping out with the skater who are who's who's having a hard time with a certain exercise and or adding even more of an explanation over something that um, they see fit right so um, team, co team coaching is, is essential. <laughs> I agree um, so now having said that can what are ways that you can use the team coaching environment so for example you talked a little bit about it sounded like they were in the class with you uh, teaching um, yeah. but do you ever does anything ever follow through do you have relationships with the other coaches that your classes would follow through with the other coaches uh possibly that they, they'll use that as an example of over mm -hmm. where their skating side is and I would like a good strong outside edge leading into the uh, skater's loop and you know a spiraling edge going into a sit and that sort of thing or you know the spirals and field movements and that sort of thing so when uh, other coaches are participating then it, it just definitely just helps that just a whole group environment when you're the the other coach is using that as an example so it's just not just going oh god here comes mark with it's just a stroking then when the coaches are actually relating that to what i'm doing then it's just a massive bonus yeah i like that and and if you get sick someone can take over yeah, true. <laughs> you don't have to worry about your it's class falling much. through <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so let's let's get a little bit to the nitty gritty. So you have tons and tons of exercises that are listed in the resource. Can we start to go through some of them and show us what they look like and maybe some key points um, of what Absolutely. you're looking for when you're doing them? Sure. 
So then um, the just getting skaters back on the ice, the ones that have been away for such a long time. Um, this is why I've, I've um, um, provided this, this one uh, exercise of just not just getting on the ice, racing around, tripping over the toe pick and killing themselves. It's when you can control exactly what they're doing. And so if you have that um, opportunity, um, hopefully most cl clubs do, um, then this, this first one, when they're just holding onto the boards, getting a feel for their blade, um, and um, which I have an example for, and we can see that real, real quick, is just holding onto the boards, facing the boards, knowing their balance points, staying in the middle of the blade, and then just rocking from the toe pick to right to the heel. And then this one exercise gives them a real complete understanding of their full blade. Okay, so Catherine, gonna bring that up here. Oh. There it is. So very, very oh. simple, holding the boards. You can do this with bent knees or straight knees. She's doing it with straight knees, but right now she's getting a real thorough understanding of what's happening, just rocking back and forth. No, and then, excellent. and then that leads into the second one, which is just um, uh, holding the boards and um, moving back and forth. And so um, it's just the, that lateral movement and um, being able to now sense what's happening with the blade side to side. And so she's getting, she's doing a two feet and then on one foot. Good. And to me that it's, it's such an integral part because so many skaters just don't get the feedback from that lateral movement and they're not pressing over on a, on a uh, 45 degree angle. And then they're getting the impact on the top part of the boot. And then they're in, in the skate, they're now figuring out where their, their weight is and the, the weight distribution from the big toe to the small toe, even the arch and the heel, right? So all of that is such an, an essential part of just anything to do with skating. I really like that. I question for you. So we talked about kids coming back and they have new skates. Um, does, is there any trouble with kids doing this with new skates or do you find this is actually a very helpful thing? Oh, it's so important for new skates. It's just the, the most perfect exercise instead of just blasting around the ice and going, okay, you're going to break in your skates. The, the skater that actually has a, a thorough understanding of how to manipulate their foot within that, that boot and on that blade is, is so critical. And um, so that goes right back to the beginning of what I was saying of, of making sure that the skater uses um, a gel sock and maybe even putting some padding in the, the gel sock, especially when they haven't been on the ice for over two years, maybe, then those, those ankles are just so tender. Mm -hmm. And when they now actually now have that gel sock in there, then they're not gonna run into problems of being injured by having these massive blisters and then they're off for another two weeks and you're going, we just started. So that happens so yeah, we've often. We've all done it. And, yeah, yeah. And actually, I'm going to use this example. I just finished working with a, um, a senior pair boy. He just finished having his, his brand new skates on and he didn't put his gel socks on for two days. And now he's got blisters and now he's going to be off for a little bit. So I'm going, you're a senior and you still don't understand that. So that's why we need coaches. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't pay the big bucks, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. What's next? Uh, exercise three. So this is, this is an excellent fun one. Um, and I love using this one. Um, you can control the, the tempo and what they're doing. Um, it's a little bit on the dangerous side, especially for the little ones, but as you can see, um, Axel here, he has a good go. understanding. Heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe. Now faster. Ready? And heel, 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 toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe. That'd be shocked. <laughs> he went really fast at the end for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Catherine, can you play that one again? So I wonder if it might come through a little bit better. For that one, you mentioned it was a little bit more difficult for the little beans. Um, yeah. But what could we do for them? Could we slow it down? Could we have them hold yes. the board? What can we get them to do? So arms out for balance, really making sure that they're using their knees there and then get them to understand that when they play planting the heel in, they got to make sure that they keep their weight forwards. I've seen it too many times. They just don't understand exactly where the weight is. And so they're planting that heel in, keeping the, the weight forward. So if they do fall forwards, they can protect themselves. The worst case scenario, is obviously, when they go on their heel and they slip back. Yeah, I know I get that. So, okay, so you're going to play that one, Catherine. Little ones, toe, heel, I super heel, emphasize heel, toe, making toe. sure that they do now this faster. slow. Ready? And heel, 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 toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe. 
Can you repeat that last part just because we had volume on there? I don't know if everybody heard. Um, okay, so the, so the little ones, I really make sure that they go super slow. And then uh, they test, test the waters, pl place the heel in, and then they're, they'll be, you know, uh, screaming and, you know, going, ah, I can't do this. And then they can plant the heel in once they get that balance point and then they rock back to their blade, then they have an, an understanding that it's not so bad, they're not going to die. And then they can keep going. And then obviously the toe picks are pretty easy for them. And then so that rhythm and the timing of moving from the heels to the toes is quite fun for them. And obviously when you speed it up and you slow it down and then you stop and then you begin again, you have a little bit of fun with them. And then they, they, they think that there's just a fun little way of just getting an understanding of exactly what's happening with their boots and blades. Yeah, I feel like you could play with the rhythm on that, your timing oh, yeah. with your keywords for sure. Yeah. Um, what about progression? How do we make this harder? Um, well, the, it, basically, it's just um, just keeping them being able to now just use their, uh, their sense of balance. And now you can now go at it with a little bit of flow and a little bit of speed. And that's a challenge in itself. And then the next thing is just now, if, if they can, they, they now start moving backwards. backwards. And so that's the same, same concept backwards. They're terrified. They're freaked out and that sort of thing. But um, I think I had that. Did I? Yeah. Do you have that video, Catherine? Can you bring that one up? Three point five, I think. Mm hmm. That's three point five. And heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel. Now let's try it faster now. Ready? And heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe, heel, heel, toe, toe. Good. Can he? You can even see at the beginning when he first starts um, that the balance he had to think about his yeah. difference of balance for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's a, a definitely an advanced skater, and so he can he can have a um, he's got a, a much better sense of how to use his blades and and whatnot. And so the little ones, you definitely definitely make sure that you're you're going really slow and emphasizing that they have to keep their weight forward so that they don't um, rock back and smack their head because that's the worst mm -hmm. case scenario. And I'm sure even a hand for support would be well, yeah. For that so as well, sometimes right? I sometimes even use the boards and just have them to start with the boards or a coach's hand and that sort of thing. And then they can kind of play with just planting one heel in and then the other heel in, and then eventually you can go for the two. Love it. That's phenomenal. Excellent. All right. So you were up to exercise four. These are fun. That's um, the, the half pivot edge pulls. And I've been doing this for such a long time. And so you can play with this. You can do large, you can do small. Um, I'll let everybody take a look at it first. Edge pull, edge pull, edge pull. Press and pull, press and pull. Bend those knees. Press and pull. Press into the edge more. So um, she right there, she's, um, she's definitely not an advanced skater. And um, you can tell by the, the rocking on the blade and she's trying to get a feel of how to manipulate her, her skating foot, pivoting around her toe pick. And then the more advanced ones, you can really challenge them by pressing and hooking the edge so that each edge is exactly the same size. And then when you start developing a nice rhythm to it, they can really go into it and go pull, 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 pull. And when they're doing it all the way down the ice, it's, it's really fun to see when they're all moving all at the same time. And then they all sense the, the rhythm and the timing and the, the edge quality is really what we're getting from the, getting them to understand the, the concept of how to hold an edge in the middle of the blade and not on the front part or the back part. Yeah, that's awesome. I love your keywords too. The press and pull, press, press, pull, pull. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can see, hear those working. Do you ever add music to these for your timing? Because you talk a lot about the rhythm. Do you ever add music? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes. So okay. um, to be able to now do that with the with the beat, um, it's um, it's such a perfect thing. That's awesome. All right, what's next? We got exercise five. Go I do that backwards. Oh yes. Right, Katarina, go. Ready and pull, 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 pull. Now faster. Pull and pull and pull and pull and bend those knees. Pull, pull. Better. She, um, it's skating backwards is easier than skating forwards. <laughs> And so they all love backwards. And um, so then they all uh, think that they're so nifty and, and thrilled about being able to do that really quick and fast. 
And so it's always great to end with that one when they're like, hey, I'm pretty good. I can do this. <laughs> That's awesome. So I think that was that was it for that. And then um, should we move on to the next one? Yeah, let's do it. So exercise five. Um, did I have a video? Yeah, I did. So I think that um, I started with the, the two feet just to make sure that she was all right because she was just a little bit off balance and whatnot. So I think we started with just the two foot edge pulls and we did it like um, five, five edges. So if you want to watch that first. Okay, good. So really simple, like all levels of skater can do that. And the higher level of skater can now really crank on the edges, learning the, the inside outside use, the knee action, how to turn over the, 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 the ankle and the blade and whatnot, right? The, obviously the, the less advanced, they're gonna have their feet so far apart and they're just gonna use their one foot to turn. And so um, each time that they progress, then you can now get a feel for using both feet. And that's the key issue and key thing that they just eventually will figure out how to do. And safe to assume we would add speed as we were progressing? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when they get more and more familiar with it, then one, uh, you have to always kind of put the balance and check into it. So, cause a lot of them just love to race their friends and go straight down the ice and just not even use the edges. So I slow them right down and then they have to now really carve out the edges and so then they, they're now squishing it right into something very small. So now they're doing like maybe 30 edges versus just like uh, six. Oh, that's phenomenal. That's excellent. And that's then excellent. The, do you do this one? Uh, yeah, on one there foot. There it is. Yeah. So I, I like to- Are you ready? Oh. oh. So that one's a little bit more challenging. It is. And so I love it just because they have to figure out balance point before they even do the edge pull. And so mm -hmm. they have to lift their foot up, think about where their balance is, and then how to accelerate from nothing. And so, um, so as you saw, she was a little bit off balance and kind of just not knowing exactly where she was. And so eventually she figured it out. And then, so the advanced ones, they can just go straight into it, power into it, be really aggressive with the, the, the stop on one foot and then obviously power it back. Okay, so talk to me about the little beans then. So they might have a little bit more challenge start, starting from standstill. Do you have any tips to help with them? Yeah, so most of them, they'll just do a nice big whack and big toe pick push. <laughs> and you're like, ah, no, don't do that. <laughs> But then eventually, like, it's obviously, it's just okay for now. Just to just let them have some fun. They push into it. They do their three or four, five edges. And then they can uh, try and get that one foot done. And then they think they're so nifty. And then, obviously, the ones that actually will try and do it on one foot, some of them will, when I try and go, no, 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 you got to do it on one foot. And then, so then I'll stand in front of them and going, okay, lift your foot now. And then now go. And then that's the ones that are kind of struggling. They'll jump on one foot and then they'll try to figure out exactly how to now accelerate while their friends have just blasted past them. And then obviously they get a little angry and then they'll eventually figure out the exercise. So that just due to just a little bit of competition. Yeah. It's amazing what you get just from having people seeing each other do the same thing. Um, yeah. So the, I feel like one of the difficult pieces of this would be the stop to transition to go backwards. Um, when you're dealing with the little guys, um, do they sometimes put their feet down for that Absolutely. guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they put their foot down and then they'll eventually um, find their balance point and then accelerate back. Obviously, the more advanced ones will just power right into the skid stop and then find their balance and just edge pull back, which is great to see. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's excellent. All right, up next. Yeah. So coordination. I love this stuff. So um, this first one, this is just such a great one to just figure out exactly how to manipulate the, the edges and having the foot cross. So we can see um, Axel here do his, his thing. Good. 
just um, yeah, that's the the ones that um, are slightly uncoordinated are their their feet they don't trust that they can cross their feet and at first they just think because when I, I start saying like okay we're going to do some two foot exercises here they're just going yeah I can do this <laughs> and then they, they start going oh my goodness I really have to now figure out exactly my balance point how to now um, get that swoosh in and then you can add to layering of it right and you can now even go a little bit faster with the pace I love doing um, that inverted spread eagle going super, super low. Mm. So it adds for the higher levels for body movements so that they can, for footwork and stuff, they can um, throw their body down forwards. And then for the inverted spread eagle, I get them to go around more. So they're going around one and a half times and maybe even with a crunch. So then now they're, they're using their body with the exercise. Well, that's awesome. Catherine, can you show that video again? We just had uh, someone ask. So he doesn't throw his foot out and around right there. And so it's Good. that little inside, he does more of like an inside spread eagle. And there's another, other times where I can now get them to go right out, nice strong right leg straight, bent leg, throwing the body forwards, which is, which is really cool looking. That's cool. And is this one of the ones that you probably need to spend a little time just going through the movement slowly? <laughs> over yeah, so over? exactly. It's somewhat complicated to get started, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. So then we just start for the little ones, just doing just the breakdown of just the, the weaving of the feet in and out. And so just just that not going backwards at all. And then we'll we'll stop them. And then we'll just I'll get them to do the, the backwards weaving in and out and getting a feel for just how uh, for little ones, it's just so complicated of, of the mm -hmm. understanding of the manipulation of the inside to outside. And so it's a good, good understanding and a good progression for them eventually doing one foot edge pulls and learning how to transition from an inside to an outside edge. That's phenomenal. Um, and progression, faster, quicker? Yeah, exactly. So when they they start getting bored with it. So Axel here, if you're showing it again, he's, um, he's just doing it on a kind of like a very slow pace in my mind. So the more advanced skaters, I'll make them do it so much faster. Oh, this is the oh that's the other one that's the next one yeah so that's okay so but um but yeah so going really quick is mm -hmm. is um something fun to see and then especially like i mentioned with the body movements and dropping the body and then doing the invert spread eagle is really cool to see so um yeah this this again this this thing is designed for all level of skaters i love it i love it all right let's do the next one Catherine was ready she was ready before us yes she was so this one I, I love as well. And um, it's just, just the use of the inside edge and the outside edge. So I'll let everybody watch it first. So he's, he's, he's definitely making it look so simple and so easy. Um, the Definitely the lower level skaters, they have no clue uh, no offense to them, but they just don't understand the the essential part of putting their foot in for the undercut of a cross cut, and so they they're terrified of putting their foot on the ice and then using that outside edge to push off of inside edge the first push dead simple, but as soon as I get them to do that cross under oh my goodness me they just just go into a little bit of a freak out mode, but eventually they'll they'll uh, understand the use of the blade and how they're not going to fall over because the other the other leg is in front of them. So, and what kind of keywords do you use to help support that, um, that learning? Yeah. So it's just middle of the blade front, middle. middle of the blade front. And so some of them, they'll go kind of middle of the blade and right into their toe pick. And eventually they'll get a fun, uh, an, an idea of how to now just get just cl close to the toe pick and then run and push off from the ball of the blade. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, Catherine, could we watch him one more time? He did. <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> It went by again. so quickly, I figured we need to see it again. So it's, it's hard yeah. not to watch that and start leaning into his push. I know it. <laughs> yeah. So the more advanced skaters, they'll, they'll start to really get that lean and then the body leans and then the, 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 the front leg can then go out on a different edge instead of just going just on a flat edge and then just using their back push 
So then now you can start using and weaving the, the inside outside edge. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I don't think I have a video of it backwards. I don't think we do either. Uh, no. Yeah, no, I don't think I did that. But the, the backwards one, it's, it's definitely tricky. And so you can sometimes you can go and do the inside edge and then push under, which a lot of, um, a lot of skaters do. I don't know if that makes sense, but you, you're going push from in front and then you cut underneath and push back. The one that I really like is that you're going push if this is a skating foot and then you're using your pushing foot, you push out with your, your right foot and then you cross out in front, which gives them a really extra understanding of how to manipulate and use that front leg to now dig in and push out in a way. So it's just certain dif different things that you're going to use for footwork or whatever to now be able to now do something a little bit tricky and a little bit more different. Yeah, you're going to have to send us that one so we can put it in the resource. Okay. Make, note of that. Yeah. Make a note for sure. Okay. All right. Next one. So we're moving on to arm swings. Oh yeah. This is great. Um, so this is just pure coordination and they, uh, so many skaters just have never been exposed to something like this. And as you'll see, Axel just dives right into it using his arms and his legs. Cause he's, he's familiar with this exercise, but, um, yeah, we can watch it first. Can you play that again, Catherine? So yeah, so just standing still, just having a, a, an understanding of exactly what they need to do. And the, the, um, what I usually had a, uh, to, how I start teaching this is have the, the skaters look at themselves in the glass and then they can, then they can see how their arms are, are moving. And a lot of times you'll see the kids going like this and they're flapping all over the place, which is just so entertaining to watch. And then the rest of their friends are going, ah, I can't believe you can, you, you can't do it. While some others are just like, come on, I can eventually do it. So they'll, 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 uh, they'll eventually figure out with just arm coordination. And then that's when I just love just the next, the next step going, okay, you think you're so good. Now put that with um, the, the, the bubbles and, or I've got another one where you do the over unders. Right. Mm. And then, so being able to now do that with moving your arms and your legs is um is such a an essential thing for figure skaters and you do it both directions yeah and so yeah i get them to switch it up so axel yeah. didn't do that there um and i wish i had him do that but um be able to go twice and then switch it up at the top is is really um interesting to watch that's interesting um i feel like off ice work on this might be important for the little guys yeah <laughs> they get yeah. some of the coordination first Exactly, exactly, because they usually, like I said, they just kind of just start flapping their arms over the place. But um, the, the best thing how I explain it is if, if they're in a very narrow between two buildings and being able to now move their arms, right? And so that they don't go out sideways, they're going in a, in a very narrow way. Mm -hmm. So they eventually figure that one out. Yeah, you have to find a dark alleyway. <laughs> mm. yeah. <laughs> Wait, we're being recorded. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Excellent. So next we have your, oh, your coordination exercise, your final one. Um, what was that? Oh yeah. So then it's just the two over two unders. And yeah. so two overs, two unders, it's, it's, um, most of them can just do cross rolls all, all the way down the ice. No problems, no questions asked, but when you're now going over, over, and then instantly going under, under, it's, it's, um, it's uh, such a, a coordinated thought process of not wrecking it and putting their foot down. So being able to now move right from all outside edges right into the undercuts um, is, um, is, is uh, another one that they all start trying to figure out. So even the advanced skater that's never done this, they'll, they'll have a hard time and then eventually they'll pick that up. Okay, cool. Very cool. And then, yeah, I, I, I didn't do a video of that, I don't think. That is okay. That is okay. Yeah. Put it on the list of the things we need for the resource. Yes. <laughs> Everybody will be anxiously awaiting. Yeah. That's excellent. Um, was there any other ones? Uh, so we have more in the resource, but not videos. Right. Okay. So then, yeah. So then it's basically the, the rest of these going, we, we move on to 
um, edge control and posture. Um, and so um, this is just such a basic exercise of now just going straight down the ice, understanding the, the full half circle. And um, you can start within either outside edges or inside edges. Um, and then, um, yeah, just having them, um, like I said in here, just really making sure that there's music that they, they know and to make it fun and interesting and then powering through great big strong edge to complete the, the lobe. Most of them will just kind of chop it off. And um, so having that access point and knowing that they have to complete it and come back to that center axis is, um, is, a, is a, something that they really all need to start to understand going forwards, outside and insides. That's excellent. Um, we have a question here from the last exercise. Um, just what edge is the undercut on, undercut on for the cross rolls? Yeah, all outsides. So you're going outside, outside, and then you're swinging the leg around, back around, and then cutting under onto an outside edge again. And then, it, so it's just, uh, it goes over, over, under, under. And so you're not touching an inside edge whatsoever. Yeah, that's cool. So that makes sense. I think that's you cool. need a, a Okay, visual. thank you for that. So as coaches, um, we sometimes uh, try see others run these sessions. So we've been watching you. We see you doing it. Uh, we want to offer it in our club for our skaters um, so that we can support them with it. Um, do you have any advice on how to keep them classes relevant, fresh, exciting um, for our skaters when we're doing it at home? Yeah, I was just about to touch on that. And it was just um, when you're using music, um, don't use the same track all the time. Um, use modern pop, but don't use that all the time because then it, they become tone deaf and they or, and or they just start singing the lyrics and they're not listening to the actual beat itself. It's amazing how some of them, they have no clue on instruments. And so I do like, you know, music 101 and now we're now starting to listen for the, the trumpet, uh, sorry, the trombone and or um, the, uh, the drum. And so they'll, they'll start listening and then waiting and then they'll understand the strong beat of the music when you know when I explain it to them and when they can see other skaters now stepping down on the strong beat of the music and, and are doing it all on four counts so um, keeping it really fresh and relevant that way and using other tracks of music I'll go right back and, and use music um, that is either you know uh, 20 years old or 30 or even 40 and then now they're, they're just like this is this is weird and so um but it forces them to now just listen to the music right yeah and the music isn't that old uh, going back 30 40 years is it mm -hmm. <laughs> oh but most of the I don't young think ones are like what is that <laughs> The kids are like, what is this? Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so with that, that's kind of the, the main um, themes that we have. Uh, we had a couple questions from the uh, registration survey that um, I'll ask, and then we'll open it up and see if anybody has any other questions if that works for you. Um, so the first one is, uh, how do you deal with traffic on a busy session? Um, going back to the, the making sure that you have uh, skaters that are all at a similar level. And then you can now navigate that. Um, I, I try and actually stay away from using like like a like a like a group format that's more than four or five skaters that are on a busy session, um, just because it's just so disruptive. Like especially when you're getting on a session and you have a coach that's running um, a little private group class and say taking over the center circle, then nobody can cross doing any of their jump patterns, doing a spin or anything, right? So. Um, I try and alleviate and stay away from, from that um, and then do more semi-privates and privates when I'm trying to do that on a busy session. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. That's great advice. And the second question is, do you have any tips for teaching balance and coordination? I think you covered a little bit of that. Um, is there anything else that you can add? Other exercises for balance and coordination? Um, yeah, it's just, it comes down to just making sure that they can just um, just do basic skating and, and follow the star one and two right and just going from there and when they have a list of things that they have to accomplish um then the, there's a visual and then they they now going okay i they, they start pushing themselves because they want to try and pass it and then and i then i turn around and even say well if you want to just pass it you can just do that or do you want to get honors and then so then now they're going okay well how do i get honors well you have to now push really well with the 
blade have a nice big circle better balance point nice form and now they start going their their wheels start turning going oh okay now i now i understand exactly that i now have to understand um the requirements to now be a star past day star one skills or star two skills yeah honestly that's a really good point uh, we sometimes forget the tools that have already been created for us right yeah. there's tools that we can use we definitely need to use what's available and there's some great stuff um, in, in progression based um, in the star one, two type yeah, of yeah, um, exactly. yeah content. That's awesome. Excellent. Does anybody else have any questions? I don't see any in the question box right now. We'll just give them a second in case anyone has any questions before we go. Um, but is there anything else you want to add before <laughs> um, we send you off on your day and back on the ice? Uh, yeah. Um, well, we didn't cover as much on the edge control and posture and power and speed, but I think that's self-explanatory. Um, and the power and speed, like I said, like it just needs to be now just done on more of a, a clear session to be able to now just run these things right on stroking sessions. But um, there's some great examples there. And um, yeah, if anybody has any questions or they, they need to ask me a question about that, then they can contact me. That's awesome. With that, I'm going to close the session. So thank you, Mark, uh, for taking time off the ice to come and do the session with us. And honestly, for all the support with um, creating the resource, I'm sure we'll be reaching out again. Um, we've got some resources to do in the future. Um, and thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And we will be back next week for a session geared for assessment coordinators and assessment days. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody has a great end of the week. Great. Thank you. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, guys.